Coach, you never ask. You said that you always ask your goaltenders to be reliable, um, and it just seemed that Scrivens did that more in the first and second period, where Ottawa was really putting the pressure on. Yeah, I thought you know again, he's got to give you a chance in the games, and no matter what happens and what happens in front of him, he's playing the position that has the largest effect on whether you're, it's positive or negative on your night. And, uh, you know, I, he stood in the net and, and stood tall. He made some big stops. He was in good position. He battled hard. Uh, specifically in the third, I thought he was better than, than the first two periods because I thought they came to the net harder and they involved four men on the rush a lot more times. And he was able to see pucks and big penalty kill at the end. All those things are things that you have to have to win hockey games. And the, the game was, could have went either way. With You know, we had... One goal called back that we think it was pretty much a premature whistle, but the rule actually states that if he has, he doesn't have to blow the, the whistle. If he has the intention to blow the whistle, he can call it dead. And that was the interpretation that we got. What did you think of Colton uh, playing a little higher up in the lineup in one minute? I thought he was fine. I thought he gave us what we needed, and it's amazing how things quiet down when he's out there. And uh, Fraser McLaren getting a first goal for you guys. Go to the front of the net, funny things happen. If you don't go to that area and we don't shoot the puck, I thought we were real guilty of this, the second period of feeding their transition game where we tried to be too cute. We were in areas that we we could have shot the puck and we tried to make cute plays. And I think there was five or six examples that we we're going to show them and say, hey, we expect you to shoot the puck in those situations. You didn't know much about Tyler Pozak when you came here, but I take it you've been quite impressed by the way he's, he's Well, I know he was a good player, and the, the thing is, is uh, uh, I think there's always a, a question that's been kind of pointed in his direction. Is he this or is he that? And it's you guys that are doing it. It's not us. As far as the coaching staff, what we're trying to do is we're trying to put people in a position they can have success. And uh, right now he's, he's, he's been a workhorse for us. He, you can see in his minutes played that he gets to, to play uh, power play and penalty killing. And that's because of his, uh, his uh, defensive ability and the draws specifically. He usually starts every penalty kill with a face-off, and if you can win face-offs at his rate, it usually it ends up throwing the puck down the ice and that kills the first 30 seconds. This is the effort level you expected following what happened in Raleigh? Well, we got out worked in Raleigh and in Carolina, and we stated that, and we, we put our that to our players, that our commitment to the work ethic had to be to a higher level than it was in the last game. Now, there's various reasons for that, but... Ultimately, we are held accountable and responsible to it. And that's basically what the, the message that we sent is that that's unacceptable and we're going to have to go out and prove it because we knew we were going to play an Ottawa club that was going to be very hungry. Anytime you play teams that are decimated with injuries, and we have our fair share, but they have a, you know, they've got an abnormal amount over there and they refilled with uh, some guys' call ups from the American League. You know, you're going to get the American League players' A plus effort, and that's what they did tonight. Those injuries. Do you think by the time the season's over, when all is said and done, it'll be the organizations with the most depth that will have been the most successful? I don't know. I think I think what it's usually the best teams win. When you get in the Stanley Cup playoffs, it's a war. It's it's not a sprint. Once the playoffs start, it becomes a man's game in a hurry. If you anybody remembers the the first rounds of last year's playoffs, it was man's game, and I would expect it to be the same. To qualify for the playoffs, it's, it's a, usually a marathon. This year, maybe it's more of a sprint, but it, the games are going to get tougher and points are going to get a lot tougher to get as we go in deeper into the this season. Brandon, did it mean anything to you to see the uh, 63 uh, Stanley Cup team out there before the game? Well, uh, in 63, I was seven years old. so uh, I knew the names because of my avid interest in being a, a young kid and probably had some of their hockey cards on the Quaker Oats box or something or was in the cereal or something. But, you know, to have a, a connection with those players, I know um, the only person I didn't know on, on that 63 team was uh, McMillan. I knew everybody else. I had had interaction or conversation with all of them at one point or another. It seemed to strike the right balance that you kept the team in the room. There's been complaints of before that the ceremonies sometimes go along and are distracted. Well, again, you know, we're in a market that uh, that uh, explores these types of uh, of uh, 
promotions to a different level because of the history that's been here, and we're never going to cast, uh, you know, a, a, a negative upon the history of the Toronto Maple Leafs. But where we're right now, we're about us. We want to try and create some of our own, and we're trying to gain respect. And it's that's all it is. It's not any disrespect to anybody else, but we'd like to make our own mark for ourselves. Randy, coming into the season, one of the big storylines was about the, the goaltending. Would it be able to hold up? And you've had two goalies on different nights really show up well for this team. How, how strongly do you feel about what you're getting from them compared to a month ago when maybe it was an unknown? Uh, you know, like I think again, your, your goaltending is is one part of your hockey club, and again, they're the they're the they're open for the most criticism or the most praise but it's up to us and it's up to them to make a commitment to do the things that we need them to do and to be steady and give you a chance and that's really the, the only pressure that's been put on them all the other pressure is put on by who who puts that pressure on them it's not us inside the room it, well don't you're part of the media <laughs> that's what and, but that's what media does that's that's your job you report what, the way you feel and what you see and there's a, that's part of the, the issue with, with uh, coaching in this market and trying to prepare your group is there's, there's lots of things that you've got to try to deflect and stay focused on the things you can control. And we can't control. If, you, if we play well, we'll they're going to write good things about you. Play poorly, they're going to write bad things about you. Have you found it challenging? Have you found it challenging dealing with that personally? Or? Dealing with you guys? No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> all right? Thanks.